Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you because in your presence there is fullness of joy. Where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. We thank you for the liberty in the house as a family. But Lord, we pray that the essence of the seriousness of the moments will not be lost out in our liberty. Speak to us. Give us attentive ears. And Father, give us understanding hearts. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. I want to refer us back to the book of Isaiah 59, verse 12 to 20. Isaiah 59, verse 12 to 20. Hallelujah. And um, particularly, I want to bring our attention to verse 14. It says, our courts oppose the righteous, and justice is nowhere to be found. Truth stumbles in the streets, and honesty has been outlawed. Yes, truth is gone, and anyone who renounces evil is attacked. The Lord looked and was displeased to find there was no justice. Does this ring a bell? Does this resonate? Sadly so. The world right now is upside down. Truth is being rewritten. Paradigms are being reordered. Boundaries are being redrawn. Everything is now put on the weight of subjectivity. Depending on how you want to look at it. These days, if you don't know who you are, people will redefine you. And they will not necessarily redefine you by giving you another name. They will redefine you by changing your values. And for you to stand for anything, you must have a conviction on that thing. Every child of God must stand for truth. And there is no paradigm for truth than the word of God. No standard for truth than the word of God. You may interpret it the way you want to suit your own fancy but the word of God is always sure Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away but my word will stand the test of time no wonder in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 18 as Paul begins to encourage us as a church to put on the whole armor of God. The first thing he tells us in verse 14 of Ephesians 6, 14. Ephesians 6, verse 14, he says, Stand your ground. Tell your neighbor, stand your ground. What is it to stand your ground? You know, sometimes you may think you know some things, then when you are told to explain it, you begin to flounder. Can somebody tell me what it is to stand your ground? I'm coming down again. What is it to stand your ground? Yes, sir. Can somebody please give daddy a microphone? I need people to be a bit smart and sharp, please. Yes, the microphone will still come, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Let your yes be yes. Let your yes be yes. And your no be no. And your no be no. So, let my word be my bound or my bond. I like that. Any other? Yes. My pastor. Follow your conviction. Follow your conviction. Follow your conviction. I like that. Yes. Can I have another definition? Bless the name of the Lord. Uh, Follow your principles based on the word of God. Follow your principle based on the word of God. There's see somebody standing here, please. Can you just run across and give him that microphone? It will come to you, sir. By the time Omori is finished today, he would have lost some. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hold on to your word. Hold on to your word. Yes, and I like all those... De- okay, there's somebody at the back there. Why are you sitting so far away, sir? Okay. Omori. Hello? Hello? Oh, and now I'm lost. There's so many microphones all over the place. Yes. Stay, stay by your belief. Stay by your belief. Hallelujah. Stand your ground. Hold on to your convictions. Stay by your belief. Let your yes be yes. Uh-uh. Praise God. Hallelujah. Unshaken or unmoved about on your belief. Unshaken or uh-huh. unmoved. Unmoved. Still, uh, uh, now we have a lot of responses. That's good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, creating a value for yourself. Creating, creating your own value. Creating, a creating value your own values yeah. for yourself. Stand your ground, your paradigms. Amen. I, I think I have more than enough to preach th- for sermons right now. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I'll go through my notes again and I'll preach a sermon on every one of them. Amen. You've just helped me for the next year. Uh, uh, my, my dear sister, you have something to say? Refuse to give in to compromise. I like that. Refuse to give in to compromise. If you want to clap, clap now. I, I, I encourage. Refuse to. It's, it, I think it's enough now. Yeah. <laughs> I see the ushers running all over the place. I even mind. I'm getting dizzy right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand your ground. And then it says you should put on the belt of truth. What is truth? Okay. Can you help me again? What is truth? Yes, ma'am. Something that cannot be altered. Something that cannot be altered. Okay, yes. Okay. Uh huh. Any other one? Yes. Something that is factual. Something that is factual. That everybody, more or less, it's, a, it's something that cannot be denied. Amen. It has been tested. It has been put through uh, numerous uh, weights and tests. And we have accepted it as what? Fact. Can you give me an example of something that is factual? The word of God. The word of God is factual. Amen. Ah, Is that what you wanted to say, ma? Amen. The word of God is what? Factual. Why is the word of God factual? Undiluted. Why is the word of God factual? Yes. Is here and then it has been tested over years, proved. Thank you very much. It has been tested and proven over the years. Heaven and earth can pass away. But the word of God will remain. Seasons come, seasons go. Errors come and go. But guess what? The word of God remains constant. And throughout the years, people have tried to rewrite the word of God. But you know what? Anything that is not of God will not stand the test of time. That's why we need to be very careful. What we run after and even our belief system There's so much information going on everywhere now 
May I suggest to you that it's not everything in the airwaves right now that is truth. Some are even cloaked in religion. They sound good, they sound right, and they push it out there. And if you are not very discerning, you too, you do what? You have to propagate it. There's an information highway right now that is frightening. And if you are not discerning, you get caught up in it. So like we said, God's word is truth. And it is described as like a belt. A belt. For men, you know what a belt does. A belt keeps your trousers from falling and thereby embarrassing you. God forbid if my belt should just give way now as I'm holding a microphone. Amen. My wife will jump right at me and cover me up. It will be instinctive. I'll probably drop the microphone and make a beeline for my office. And as I'm going that, I tell the technical people, don't record, don't record. Am I communicated? Your belt gives you confidence. It covers your nakedness. And in some cases, your belt could also be an accessory for holding other things, depending on the kind of belt. So if it's a military man's belt, it has avenues for him to have pouches, maybe a place where he can hang his gun, and some other essentials that is dependent on that belt. And one thing you find out about the belt, the belt is round. It goes around your waist, right? It signifies a wholesomeness. Cut it, what happens? It becomes ineffective and ineffectual. The belt of truth. We cannot, as children of God, accept deceit. We cannot afford to play with untruth for whatever reason, either out of convenience or out of personal gain. Isaiah 11 verse 5. Isaiah 11 verse 5. It says, It will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. So each time you see belt, it's in relation to truth. And one thing that is scarce now in our society, and unfortunately in the church, is truth. Truth or untruth is now explained away as we need to be wise. Um, it's not exactly a lie, it's a white lie. Even lies are qualified as big and small. But may I suggest to you and submit that lie is a lie. Do you know it was a small lie that made Adam and Eve eat the apple or the fruit? I'm not sure if it was an apple. But you see again, that's how we rewrite stories. They said the fruit was good to, but we've replaced it with what? 
Apple. Even a pastor talked about Apple. Then I quickly corrected myself because it is very subtle. We don't know what kind of fruit it is, but it was a fruit. Now, they ate it because they were told a lie. It will seem like a small lie. Not a big deal. So you ate the fruit. But God said, don't eat it. And they ate it. And that has put us all in the trouble we are in today. No other paradigm has God given us than the word of God. And each time you look in the Bible, you see the various expressions of truth. Psalm 119, verse 160. Psalm 119, verse 160 says, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. John 17, 17. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. says, Walk hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly explains the word of truth. King James says, correctly divides the word of truth. By the way, the topic of my message is the belt of truth. If you've been following me for the past few weeks, you know we've been looking at the whole armor of God. So we're looking at truth as a belt. Proverbs 6, 20 to 23. Proverbs 6, 20 to 23. My son, obey your father's commands, your father in heaven, and don't neglect your mother's instruction. Keep their words always in your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, their counsel will lead you. When you sleep, they will protect you. When you wake up, they will advise you. For their command is a lamp and their instruction a light. Their corrective discipline is the way to life. The wisest man upon the face of the earth is telling us that the way to a good life is through the truth. In the word of God. And binding it to our hearts. So many times we pay lip service to God's word. But when it's crunch time. We truncate it on the platform of expediency. Oh, it's going to cost me. To say the truth. You know, there was a time my our daughter, now that's my wife is here. Our daughter had some issues in the school, herself and and two other uh, classmates. So we were summoned to school. And one way or the other, her position concerning what transpired was constant. It was, she just, I mean, she said it the way it was. The others tried to cover it up, said, no, that's not what happened. This is what happened. And she said, I take responsibility. I was the leader. They followed me. You know, her counselor and teacher said they were so impressed that 
she could come out and say this is what happened. And even in the, same, in the process, even giving her mate some uh, reprieve. And she said she's ready to take the punishment. So even though we were not very happy, but we were also happy in that in spite of what she was going to go through, she stood for what? The truth. So what am I saying? So many times we truncate truth on the platform of convenience. What is going to be the cost? And let me tell you why. That is why this nation is the way it is today. Everybody compromising. In fact, we've become a transactional society. Let us trade off. I break traffic laws. The man comes to you and says, I will let you go. Just pay me. And then you negotiate the price of truth. Now you're all gone quiet on me. You know one thing I noticed? You know when Omoba was reading the Bible passage and uh, he came to the part where he says he will pay his enemies for, his, for their evil deeds. I noticed nobody said amen. The amen was very muted. Did anybody notice? Because he was saying he will pay God's enemies. Amen. Not your enemy. If that scripture said he will pay your enemies for their deeds. Every day everybody to say amen. But when now we were listening, he said he will pay his own enemies. I noticed that we were very cautious with our amen. Because we could identify with the preceding verses. Am I communicating? You've all gone quiet on me again. Pastor, quickly leave this place now. Amen. Can we sell ourselves some truth? All of us have compromised. Even me talking to you. Let me tell you how I've compromised. Many times I come, ah, this is the wants to know. Even me, now I'm talking to you. Come to Jesus. He will butter your bread. He will sugar your seeds. Lie. It's not for me to tell you that Jesus will butter your bread or sugar your... Come to Jesus. All your problems will be over. Then you are frustrated. I have your attention. Even the people who are dozing have woken up. Our demeanor, our environment, one way or the other does not, does not really cut across the essence of the gospel. The seriousness it deserves. We have a misconception of what this thing is all about. It's bread and butter gospel. I keep on saying it. When God hears our prayer in Nigeria, and he will hear it. And things become rosy for almost everybody. We will know the people who are serving God. Church is full now because of our expectation. And guess what? God is not mocked. He knows why you are here. Somebody once wanted to come to this church because I've told you before, he feels that if he starts coming to this church, some bread will, bo will rub off. He says, um, I saw cars. Amen. I saw Pastor Kingsley's car. Pastor Edmond's car. And some other cars. I just felt this is a gathering of well-to-do people. Abby? If I'm with them, one way or the other, what will happen? It will rub off now. I mean, it's common sense. Sooner than later. So, 
He came and said, can I start coming to your church? I said, no, you don't have to come to my church to be rich. So if you go to Ogun State, somewhere around Ijebu, there's one Baba there. Go and meet him. Amen? He will tell you what to do. He will get rich. But if you want to come to church so that you can have an enduring relationship with your God, whether it makes you rich or not, then you are welcome. I had another funny encounter. A very, very pleasant woman, old lady, who had fervency for her daughter who was yet to marry and was advancing in age, came to meet me in my office and said, Pastor, I want my daughter to start coming to this church. I said, why? He said, the church she has been going for years, she didn't find a husband. He said, but as I pass your church, I saw all the cars outside. There's not only fish here, there's big fish. <laughs> so I spent the next one hour trying to convince mama that it is God that gives husband. But she just couldn't understand. She even started running down the pastor of her daughter. Like she doesn't even know the man doesn't have anointing. He's been in that church for so long. She has not gotten any. She said, what is the use of you being in this church? So, I, I, by the way, what church is that? She now mentioned somebody I know very well. Ah, I said, Mama, that man is a very anointed man of God. Where are you anointing? Oh? <laughs> Talking about the truth embedded in the word of God. As a roundup. The Bible says we should put on the belt of truth. How do you put on the belt of truth? Romans 12 verse 2. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. New Living Translation. Let me read the King James Version. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Can we begin to have a renewal of mind for goodness sake? Let him who steals, steal no more. I told you of a friend of mine who had to step out of one particular trade or business because he said, I can't continue. He said, it's too full of deceit. It cost him money. It cost him his status in society. But he has his peace of mind. It even cost it his marriage. Because it was money that brought the wife. And after money left, guess what? It develop, she developed wings. If I had a wing like a dove. I know another person. Very well off. But he was into illicit drug trafficking. He was caught. And he was jailed in England. That's how I got to meet him, by proxy. Because when he was in jail, I met his wife. She was distraught. They didn't know how they were going to survive. But we started mentoring his wife. And through our associates abroad, they would go to the prison and minister to her husband. He gave his life to Christ. One of the, if I mention his name, some of you will know him. I won't mention his name. Today, he's out of jail. He's back in the country. He's getting his life together, but it's not the kind of life he was living before. But he told me, he said, Pastor, I have my peace of mind. He said, I can't go back to where I was coming from. He said, I've seen God real. He shared some of his experiences with me, and I, I, even me, Pastor, I'm jealous. And I go, ah, 
I'm the pastor here. Now, now, we, now we mentor this person. He experienced past our own. Let me tell you one experience he had. He said one day he was in jail. After he had spent maybe about six or seven years in jail, he said he just remembered one day that, ah, when last did I eat Witterbix? Witterbix. He said, no sooner had he just thought of it that a warder was passing with Witterbix. And the man looked at him in his jail room and said, would you like Witterbix? He said, he started weeping. He said, the warder didn't understand why he was weeping. He said, God, you are mindful of me even here. Even here, you are mindful of me. He has tasted God. Nothing was going to make him compromise what he has gotten. Nothing. Because everything is temporal. But eternity is permanent. You renew your mind through the word of God. You read the Bible you listen to sermons from pastors and teachers. And please, also be careful where you go. I don't understand how people have turned church into something else. How people can go to a church where you are spraying the pastor and you believe you're in church. Don't you know that's a cult? Why are people so gullible? In the church of God. Abnormal has become normal. It's grass and they're going to eat grass. Anybody will know that that's hypnotism going on. Hello? And please, let me add this. It's not everybody who can tell you where you have been coming from that is from God. There's what we call familiar spirits. Go to the Babala who I was telling you about in Egypt. We will tell you your story. I don't know the Babala who... I know the way people are thinking now. It's just, it's just, just. I know they are there. Because I've heard that uh, even in those days in the East, when they want better medicine, they go to. I didn't mention it all. <laughs> and I mention them. See, some of them even boast in the East there that I got trained in uh, that part of the country. And that increases their status. Please, don't. That's where I come from. My mother is from there, so be careful how you mention that place. But on a more serious note, it is what you ingest that becomes you. You can't depend on, with all due respect, 45 minutes of uh, sermon in church. It helps you. It's supposed to guide you in a direction, but you must ingest the word of God. Memorize it. Expose yourself. Let it be things that excite you. That is what kept us. When I gave my life to Christ, I was everywhere. I was hungry. Oh, did we go to some strange places? Yes, but when the spirit of God is in you, you will know you will not, I'm not coming back here again. Just hungry for the word. Because the word of God is truth. Anything you want is in the word of God. I tell people I'm not very smart. But I have the word of God. You bring a problem. 
I am very, I'm not proud to let you know that, eh, go and come back. It doesn't take anything away from me. By the time I delve into the word of God, by the time I share with one or two people, and we look into the word of God, there will be a solution to your problem. Pastor, how do I talk to God? It's in the Bible. The disciples said, teach us to pray. Say, okay. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Abi, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive the trespasses of those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Guess what? If that's all you pray, it's the word of God. But please, when you are praying it, pray it well. Don't pray it like a nursery rhyme. Our Father, in I am I Take time. Why? Because you are talking to your father who is in heaven. Can you imagine if you are God? You are not God. Our Father who is in heaven. Hello, Daddy. Thank you for coming. Just be looking at you. Hello. From where to where? Why? Because he knows you are just running through the motions. God is not complicated. We are the ones who are complicated. God will meet you at your point of faith and need. There's no big man of God. Do you hear what I just said? Some of you, you are looking at me with disbelief. He created all of us in his own image. One thing I don't like, you know, don't call me daddy. Eh? I'm pastor Femi. I'm daddy to my children. Amen. I see some of you. You are older than my father. No, I don't think so. I don't think there's anybody older than my daddy. But you know what I'm trying to say. What I'm saying is don't, don't, let, don't, don't be flippant. Do things intentional. Do things with them. In the light of truth. Who is this person to you? Don't play. There are some people, they will call you daddy. In their hearts, they kill you. hate you. Am I communicating? I'm okay. Pastor Femi, it doesn't take anything away from me. But I also understand there are some cultural issues here. Especially if you are a part of the country. Anybody older than you is what? Daddy. Okay, no problem. Like I have an older friend. He says, I should call him by name. I say, I'm sorry, I can never do that. You always be Egmo. All his friends call him, even younger ones, they take liberty for license. They just open their mouth and go, they call him by. I say, hey, wow. Now that is my own cultural disposition. But I told him, I said, no, I can't do like that. So give me permission to call you Egbo. Amen? And he's like an older brother to me. Do you want to improve your marriage? It's in the word of God. After all said and done, go to the manual. You can go from one counselor to the other. If you are not committed to the word of God, your marriage ain't going to work. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. As a roundup. Amen. At one point in time, Jesus said to his, to his father as he was praying for his disciples, he says, um, sanctify them with your word. Your word is truth. 
So it's the word of God that is going to cleanse you. It's the word of God that is going to redefine you. And then ultimately he said at one point in time, he says, look, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. So you are looking for truth? Word of God. The embodiment of the word of God is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The word, Jesus, was made flesh. And he dwelt in our midst. And that is the totality of the equation. You have Jesus, you have everything. You have Jesus, you forge a closer relationship through his word. You have everything. It's my prayer that the truth you know will set you free. The truth of God's word will deliver you from the expectations of men and society. And as you stand for the truth, you will not be ashamed. You may suffer some inconvenience. That's why I need to balance it out. Is somebody listening to me? But in the light of eternity, he gives you the grace to weather the storm. And guess what? He covers your nakedness. That is my story. That is our story. That's been our experience. It may not make sense, but you're standing for the truth. Let us pray. I want you to talk to God right now and ask him that in every way I've compromised your truth. And please listen to me. There are some of us you know. You know areas of compromise. You are uncomfortable with it. I'm not talking about people who are comfortable with compromise. But true children of God, when you are compromising, you are uncomfortable. Except God is not with you. Talk to him. I say, Lord, just have mercy on me. Everywhere I've compromised your truth. Are you in sensitive positions where you decide on the course of your organization or even the course of people. Have there been compromises because of expediency? And it's been disturbing you. Ask God to have mercy on you. And any way you can restitute, ask God to give you the grace to restitute. Father, have mercy on me. Even my position as a pastor of this church, every way I have compromised truth, please forgive me. And as you pray, I want you to pray this next prayer point. Ask that the Lord will alert you to his leading and make you sensitive to hear his voice. As he speaks through you, through his word. Say, Father, make me alert to your leading. Make me sensitive to hear your voice as you speak to me through your word, the Bible. Turn that to a prayer. Make me sensitive to hear your voice. That as you are speaking to me through your word, I will yield say father let my eyes of understanding be enlightened to have insight and to know your ways father open my eyes of understanding to have insight and to know your ways Finally, say, Father, mold my heart 
and make it subject to your will. I pray I'll walk in your precepts and abide by your principles revealed in your word. In my day-to-day -day activities, turn that to a prayer. Lord, let me abide by your principles as revealed in your word in my day-to-day -day activities. Mold my heart. Mold my heart. There's a song that says, change my heart, O God. Make it ever true. Let me be like you. Change my heart, O Lord. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O Lord. May I be like you you are the porter I am the clay break me and mold me this is what I pray Change my heart, oh Lord. Make it ever true. Here's my heart, oh Lord. May I be like you. Father, that's our prayer that you change this heart of stone and make it that of flesh that will stand by the truth of your word irrespective oh God of the cost let us stand for you I pray for that one woman and that man who Lord are saying God have mercy on me give me a second chance give me the grace to be able to stand for you come what me I pray Lord God the hands of mercy will reach out to them and I pray Lord God Almighty you who never gives up on anyone you give them a second chance and so seeing the attitude of prayer I want to make an altar call you want to give your hearts to Jesus you want to surrender your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus and you want me to pray with you wherever you are in the privacy of the moment everybody minding their own business I just want you to indicate by raising your, your hands and then we'll pray together pastor pray with me, pray for me anyone, if you're raising it, raise it up very well all heads bowed, eyes closed I want to surrender to Jesus I want to give my heart to him is there anyone? Thank you. I can see a hand over there. They are not raising up to me, please. It's a call to Jesus. Not to a man, not even to a church, but to the body of Christ. Any other person say, Pastor, pray with me, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Okay, please repeat after me, my brother. Just place your hand as a sign of surrender on your chest. And say, Lord Jesus, I come before your throne of mercy. Thank you, because in you I find mercy. Thank you for not giving up on me. I invite you into my life. Lord Jesus, please write my name 
in your book of life. Preserve me unto yourself. I commit all my struggles into your hands. My fears. Lord, I hand them over to you. Help me to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for your son. And I ask, oh Lord, that the joy that accompanies salvation will come upon him. Every accusation against him, Father, Lord God, we silence in the name of Jesus. Every altar that will be speaking against him, Father, we silence by the blood of Jesus. Let it be well with him. Grant him a victorious Christian life. In Jesus' name, we pray. My brother, I want you to please go with the ushers. I want to share one or two things with you and then they'll come back. Father, I pray for your church, the body of Christ. I pray we'll be bold to stand for your truth. I pray, Lord God, we will not compromise our values. And I pray, Lord God, that we will not let you down. We take responsibility for what's happening in our nation. And we ask God that you have mercy on us. And that when you are looking for people as change agents, you will not omit any of us here. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Someone. We hope you found God through his word in this message. God is not done with you yet. If you'd like to know more about him or have questions arising from the message you've heard or any other inquiry you'd like to make, please call us on telephone numbers. 0803-222-3560-0803-344-1592-0903-3168-847-0803-715-3366. You can also send an email to rccg.promiseland.org. Follow us on Twitter at rccgpromiseland at the promised land of the redeemed Christian Church of God, our hearts and arms are wide open to receive you. Welcome. God bless you.